Hello? I'd like to bring uh, today's meeting, Tuesday, December 5th, of the Ways and Means to order. Deanne, roll call, please. Here. 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 Yes. Here. 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 Thank you. Uh, before you is the minutes of 1717. What is your pleasure? Motion approved. Support. Uh, motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same time. Motion carried. At this time, we have public input for those that wish to address the committee. Uh, please approach the podium and uh, state your name and address and speak to us. Hello, my name is Sandy Dabrowski and I'm with the Bangor Township Green Team. And this is Kaylee Anderson and she's our youngest member on our Bangor Township Green Team. And she has a few things to speak to you today. And uh, here you go. Hi, my name is Kaylee Anderson. I'm here today to talk about our future. Our future is in your hands, and I would like to talk about what we need to do. First, we all need to cut waste and recycle because it will help our Earth and our future. This is the <coughs> average in four months of the amount of the four years. Second, we need to live smart and car energy use and start using LED light bulbs. Third, we need to promote healthy eating habits to have a good life. Fourth, we need to stop polluting our land, air, and water. Would this board take an oath to protect all kids and grandkids and me so we have a future? I'm planning on working with the green team and my school to help start a program of Let's Save the Future Today. There are many things we can do to help make a difference for all of us. I have some examples here to show you. This is made out of a paint stick. This is a, a pine cone. You can spray paint it and put a ribbon on it and it can become an orange. This is a tongue presser. It can be an ornament too. <laughs> These two are made out of old puzzle pieces and you can change them into an ornament. <coughs> this is made out of old pants. What you can do with it is you can make it a headband, hair piece, um, a rug, and you can do a lot of things with this piece. And then... This bag right here is made out of these water bottles. They are a little, they're they can hold a lot more stuff <coughs> and then it causes less trash and then you can keep on reusing it over and over again. This game right here, um, this piece is made out of a rain barrel which you can do with um, the piece that people usually throw out you can make into a game. You have a ball and you toss it into the game. And then if you make it in here, you get one point. In here, you get two points. And then, can we count on you? Thank you for listening. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Kaylee. What we're asking today is for your support uh, of the Bangor Township Green Team because we may run into some challenges in the future. So that's what we're asking for today. And um, we want the, the young people to go forward with being green because then it'll become a habit. Thank you. Sharon Stolzberg, Lake Honey Township Mike, Supervisor. Yeah. Oh. I just want to make one comment. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Thanks, I'm sorry, Sharon. I just wanted to uh, weigh in and say, Kaylee, you uh, gave a great presentation, very informative, and it is something we all should be thinking about in the future. I want to thank your mom and your sister for being here today to your presentation. And also I see Mike Bristow in the She's back so row who uh, has played an instrumental role in, first of all, uh, activating initially the green team in Bangor Township. Then it sort of uh, lost a little bit of interest, but now it's reinvigorated. And Mike, I want to thank you for your leadership in Bangor Township as a Bangor Township resident. Commissioner Krieger and I appreciate and and the officials of the township really appreciate what you're doing to enlighten the public about best practices on energy, energy conservation. Yeah. And it's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful to see such a, a young lady have the poise to come and present uh, her uh, information to this public meeting. So thank you, Kaylee, and thanks everyone from Bangor. Oh. <laughs> okay, I guess you're up now, Sharon. Okay. <laughs> Sharon Stalsberg, uh, King County Township Supervisor. I've been supervisor for King County Township 27 years, um, also the assessor. We recently passed a, an ordinance that has uh, contributed monies to the township. And with those monies, we have employed two deputies for the Bay County Sheriff. In looking at what the problems are in the schools, and even though the medical marijuana hasn't produced anything as far as plants. There is a terrible drug issue in our schools. So what we would like to do is have a canine unit. We would pay for the canine unit, the, the dog, the training, the car, and the deputy. That would give us a third deputy, and it would give Bay County the opportunity to have this canine unit for all the schools. We're not just keeping it for King County Township, for King County Schools. We would like to see it in every school in Bay County. Um, with that, uh, I don't have anything else except please let us have our key. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving it to you. Sure. Yes. Oh, want to talk to you? <laughs> Come here, sure. Sure. You mentioned all the schools. Now you've been in contact with all the schools. No, but I do know a lot of the schools are hiring. Um, they bring other dogs in from other counties, and they're hiring private organizations. Um, this would give you an opportunity to have our own that can go in the school and it could go on a minute's notice. I mean, you know, if they think there's a problem, then they could bring it in. But you would be using this in other areas in yes. the school? Yes, definitely. Definitely. It would be a dog that is used for um, missing persons, which we have some old people walk away or kids. Um, and it also um, detects drugs. Um, so it would be able to go and check lockers. And um, so that's what we'd like to see. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I do. Oh. If you will. <laughs> so my understanding is Penn County would make the investment. Yes. And then, so this dog would then be the property of Bay County or the property of Penn County? It would have to be um, considered with Bay County, I, I believe, right, Chair? Sure. Yeah, he would be a deputy of Bay County. Okay, so, mm -hmm. okay. Because we would have a Bay County officer be his trainer and handler. Correct. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to petitions and communications. Under item A, under the Bay County Sheriff, we have the bayonet grant renewal. What is your pleasure? So moved. Support. We have a motion in support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. 
Under two, we have the amendment to the Penn County Township Road Patrol Agreement, which Sharon was just talking about. So moved. Support. We have a motion and support. Any further discussion? Commissioner Drancher. I would just like to take this time to thank, we have, uh, besides uh, the uh, supervisor, we have two members of the board from Penn County Township oh, here too. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies, for your board and, and what you're doing up there with the deputies. Uh, just fantastic for Northern Bay County. Not, not It's not just Penn County Township. These guys are out if they're needed in other townships up there. It's just a great asset and I thank, thank you for doing what you're doing. You know, I get letters. I've got a couple of letters for me, you know, how well the, the deputies, you know, how they took care of the case and they took care of everything. So it's just fantastic. Thank you. Commissioner Greer. Yep. I, the sheriff's here. If I can just. You said it. I'm, it's not that I'm in disagreement with everything. I, I, I like how it's all being kind of put together, but I want to make sure that all the T's are crossed and the periods are in the right place when it comes to added growth and, and how it's going to work out of your department and that um, corporate council has looked at all of the, the paperwork on it so that there won't be any hiccup down the road as far as accessibility or maybe there's a situation where the dog is needed in one place but yet Penn Conning saying, well, you know, we paid for this and we need them here. You know, who's going to make that call? Is it completely under your jurisdiction and, and decision making, or how is that all going to blend together? And I need to know that um, your department's comfortable. Yeah, we, we, and we're, we're planning the same thing. I mean, not to you know, start running right away. We know we got to crawl here first and get all policies and procedures and, and some of the stuff with the union and stuff. We want to make sure everything, you know, all our things line up right so it's not like that i mean we, we plan on getting all those procedures we're already working on a lot of that stuff we've been talking with corporation council and stuff just to make sure what the insurance carriers and stuff are there and then setting up a lot of the logistics still we're still <coughs> working on that okay but yeah before it goes forward correct so no problems in the future then i'm hoping not sir all right thanks commissioner Herr. thank you mr chairman uh sheriff uh, the, you're gonna like I'm, I'm assuming they will walk before you run with this. Correct. You know, this is uh, something that we've never done in Bay County before. I know, I don't know, Saginaw County probably does it, and mm -hmm. and I don't know anybody else. Midland does Midland do it? I don't even know. You mean has like, got a dog? I mean, so, there's a few around us. So I, I assume it, you know, even that that you guys, this, this is a slow process. I mean, it's not like we're gonna have a dog next week. No, correct. Go, okay. and, and that's what we gotta do. We've, we've reached out to some of those other agencies, some of the agencies throughout the state that have programs up and they're sending in stuff that we're reviewing and going through with the command staff and everybody to get everything set up. And then plus with the union, just going through, making sure everything's gonna work accordingly. And then keeping with Sharon to make sure everything's still in those guidelines with, with them and Sean and Amber. Okay. I think that's, that's important. I mean, just slow, yeah. we like slow and easy. Yep. And that's what we want to do to make sure we're doing that right. Because it'll really, I think it'll be a great thing and really benefit the county too once we get things going where they are. So, thank yes. you. Commissioner Riga. Yeah, I just had a question about the funds from the state. Do you think there's money available now from the, like the registration fees? There's going to be money available for local, is the townships going to get the money or is it counties going to get the money? I don't know how that money is going to be flowing from them. From the, state. from the medical marijuana yeah, grant, the marijuana, is that yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's where most of that funding is coming through is with, with Sharon. I think that's how you're you're funding most of the projects. With the state. There will be monies coming into the Bay County Sheriff. Yeah. I think it's they're not for some yeah. of the that time. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, they will get it, but we're not we, we're not intending on using it for this. We're, we want to do it. We want to fund the dog, and we want to see it become another avenue. Thank you. One comment for the sheriff. Thanks for working with them in all the meetings and everything else too. So no, it's, it's been job. great. It's been good great. job for the well, uh, Shauna who worked work diligently. I don't know if she's even here, but for diligently on the legal aspects of this so far too. So yeah. like you say, it's just going to be a small process, but we'll get there. <coughs> Marinette right. County can do it. Bay County can do it. <laughs> And I don't want to be redundant, but I want to thank you, Sheriff, for you and 
and your staff working closely <coughs> with our officials from Pin County Township to make Bay County even safer. And uh, I think it's a tremendous collaboration that's going to benefit not only the residents of Pin County Township, but especially Northern Bay County and the county as a whole. So I know it's been a lot of work and very tedious to put this together, but we appreciate Penn County Township's generosity in terms of their sharing of their resources and also your leadership, uh, Sheriff, on helping to forge this alliance to uh, assure the uh, public safety here in Bay County and the protection of our residents in Northern Bay County and throughout, especially with the canine <coughs> unit as that moves forward. So thank you, Sheriff. Sure. Sure. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> get away from my borders to get back. <laughs> or one shy. Are we waiting for Commissioner Krieger? You know, there's been uh, several people gone missing uh, in the area. Uh, over the past several years, and I think this will be a great asset uh, to help find them. Yep. Find them sooner, quicker, especially the younger ones. Uh, you know. You had quite a few old people, too, who have Alzheimer's or you know, dementia, that it would be able to help find them, too. Uh, right. Without any further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> all opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have the Bay County Prosecutor, uh, the Bayonet Grant Renewal. So, so moved. Support. So, motion and support. Any discussion? Commissioner question. I, I haven't seen much about Bayonet in the news. <coughs> I guess they probably don't want to be publicized too much, but uh, I assume they're still fairly active. <laughs> in the community. Well, who, who I can ask that about? Maybe Nancy? <laughs> or Sheriff, maybe the Sheriff. <laughs> about being, just a question about Bayonet, and I just hadn't seen much about Bayonet. I know they had a big drug bust in Saginaw, the, the Sunnyside gang, and they t it put, put a lot of people away. I don't maybe, I imagine Bayonet might have been involved with that, with that activity also. <laughs> I think with most of the drug teams we work with, things kind of ebb and flow because it depends on how long their investigation takes. Yeah. It's not always a day-to-day -day thing. Quick. They'll put time and effort in it. Um, they are working on a case, or we have one going in court right now with them, somebody in Northern Bay. Um, and I don't really want to discuss too much of the details, but um, it depends. They, they do work in Saginaw. They do work with the other drug team in our area. So a lot of that takes a little bit of time for them to assemble their cases because it uh, takes a lot of effort and day-to-day uh, -day stuff. But yes, they are still involved and we do see them on a regular basis. Uh, I uh, had a patient who was an undercover officer and it took quite a while to get, you know, get into the, the gang, a couple, three years to get part of it and then ready to get out of the evidence. So it's not, it's not an overnight type thing, right? No, yeah. definitely not. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under Bay County Prosecutor, we got uh, 5D hit security audit. Or 4D. Yeah. Sport D. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Under C, we got friend of the court, we got the independent IT security audit. So moved. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. Under the Bay County Drain Officer Office, 
We have the Drain Commissioner, Soil Erosion and Sedimentation Control, Fee Schedule Proposal. Where is your place? So, support. We have a motion and support. I think this will be a good update to help the townships and the, and the county as a whole. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Same sign. Motion carries. Next under the drain office, we have the remonumentation administrator 2018. Remonumentation grant and resulting contracts. So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Next, under Administrative Services Director, the uh, the amendment to the independent contractor agreement for veteran service officer. What is your pleasure? So Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Next we got Director of Environmental Affairs and Community Development. The return of the funds for from the boardwalk conceptual renderings project. So moved. Support. We have a motion of support. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Next, we have uh, Gypsy Moth Program Coordinator, the RFP for application for the firm for continuing treatment of the ash trees. What is your pleasure? So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carried. Next we have the Director of the Department of Aging, the Activity Center Site Agreements. So what is your pleasure? Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion on those? Commissioner McGee. I, I guess the re renewal means it's the same same level of funding as it was before. I, I usually get questions from some of my township. Well, just yes. one of my townships. Yes, <laughs> William Township usually has a question. They're always looking for a little more money. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell them to stay in level. Mm -hmm. okay. Same money, flat. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? I think they're a valuable thing out there. Or senior citizens to gather. I've attended a few when I was a commissioner before. With and you're old uh, enough, huh? You qualify. You're old enough. I qualify now. I, I was younger, but so. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Under animal control manager. We have the Michigan Department of Agricultural Grant. So moved. Support. We have a motion and support. <coughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Next we have the general fund appropriation. What is your pleasure? So moved. Support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Next we have the transfer of funds, 4,000 from Animal Control Reserve for restricted contributions. So, support. We have a motion and support. Any discussion on that one? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. See, that was way too easy, Mike. Sorry <laughs> <laughs> back there. I said, no, that was, that that was way too easy, easy Mike. <laughs> no, he doesn't, trust me. 
Mike, is that a comment? Yeah, I think it seems like there's a lot of activity going on in animal control. I think, you know, the Humane Society is doing a lot of stuff too, so and I haven't had any calls lately, so that's, that's always a good thing too. So, seems like you're doing a good job. Thank you. Mr. Marsh. Yeah, Mike, I'd like to uh, commend the manager and the big staff and all the volunteers. I think we're rapidly approaching, I think, best practices at Bay County Animal Control. And I would expect uh, Manager Halstead that our kill rate will be significantly lower for 2017 than it was for 2016. Plus with the other uh, investments that have been made on the minor investments, but important ones on the cat condos and separation uh, of some of the animals and the, uh, so that we can reduce the rate of respiratory illness due to stress. Um, this particular the cat population. So, yeah, I think everything's coming along really well. And please let uh, your staff know that uh, and Debbie works closely with you, of course, uh, Debbie Russell. Uh, everyone is pleased with the great changes we see there. Well, thank you all, staff. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll go on to payables. Uh, We have uh, the approach resolution and stash on that one. So moved. Support. No motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Next, in our finance officer, we have the analysis of the general fund equity. Motion received would be in order. So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Then we got the update to the Executive Directive 2007 11. Motion to receive would be in order. So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Under item three, we have the information systems 2018 budgeted maintenance expense for the hardware and software. So moved. Support. We have motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Next, we have the budget adjustments, which were provided to us. What's your pleasure on them? So moved. Support. We have a motion to support. Commissioner Kuhn. Uh, 016. Could I get an explanation on that? That looks like it's just the uh, uh, self insurance for <coughs> retirees. Is that an accurate assumption? Reserves that, and then we just needed to uh, uh, increase the, the. There was not enough money in fund balance, correct? There is enough money in fund balance in the healthcare fund. In the healthcare. Yeah, but not right, right. But this was uh, specifically for the retirees, right? Not from the, you know. I think it's twofold. There's one that's keeping the retiree healthcare money because of the. Um, moving to the fully insured plan, so just realigning that. And then in addition, there's been a couple of higher cost medical claims that we had not predicted. So we are increasing the actual medical claim line item for both retirees and active <coughs> But we still have a sufficient fund balance for the, in the healthcare fund. Yes, sir, yes. But it's not shown here. The fund balance is not shown on the budget, doesn't 
before you for the uh, health department. Uh, so moved. Support. We have a motion of support and that's to increase the fund balance to the health department. Commissioner Coon. Thank you. Maybe I get some, just, I just have some questions that would maybe clear it up for me. Uh, under the explanation, health fund balance was nearly $200,000 less the use of health fund balance, yes. So in traditionally, in the last couple of years, we've spent uh, any uh, health fund balance anywhere from 300 to, and the previous year was $266,000. Uh, we were only allocated $75,000 this year. So that gave us a very narrow margin to work with there. And that was your fund balance? That was the, the fund balance that we were allowed to use 75, for this, yeah, seventy-five thousand. The, the previous year. That's correct. Okay, and then um, it says administration incurred substantial increases in direct <coughs> direct costs. You gave a number one hundred fifty-one thousand. Is that the additional increase, or is that what you're paying this year? There, it's a number of factors that fit into that. Number one is that we were budgeted seventy-five thousand. In May, after the books were closed for 2016, um, that fund balance, the allowable use of fund balance, was actually reduced to 30,000. There were unanticipated costs to retiree health care um, and unanticipated drops in revenues as a result of that as well. Um, we had increased uh, cost in retirements and some anticipated costs in personnel. Um, additionally to that, uh, Part of that is that some of that fund balance was actually, or excuse me, some of the funds uh, that were incurred this year have actually been sequestered. Um, they were EMR incentive funds that we were planning on using for uh, future use of paying for the software as well. Are you explaining the indirect cost? No, I did not explain the indirect that, that cost. That was the question. That's, oh, so then on top of that, so we have less fund balance to use. On top of that, um, for 2017, the transfers out due to indirect cost actually rose by $158,000 this year. So that brought the margin of error down even further and further. So normally I wouldn't come to the board to ask for additional funds. So let me uh, explain in the simplest terms I can how the fund balance actually works. There's 37 budgets that we have at the health department. And uh, there are four major funding sources for that. First is state and federal grants that we get from the state of Michigan. Sometimes they're passed through, pass through funds from the federal government. Uh, there are clinical and program fees. Um, so when people come in for services, we will charge them, or if we charge for licenses and, and things like that. Um, there's transfers in from the general fund and then finally, there's something called cost-based um, reimbursement, Medicaid cost, full cost-based reimbursement. So uh, what that is is that that's a settlement that's always two years behind um, for uh, basically not paying enough of the cost. Um, and each is about a quarter in a thing. But when you think about transfers from general fund, you also have to take into consideration transfers out as well. So I think this year there was budgeted a million dollars, um, but we actually paid out or paying out $588,000 this year 
and transfers out to other different county departments because of those unintended or because of those costs. Um, so as I said before, there was a very small margin of error. Now, normally what happens with this is that we generate enough revenues through fees and, and uh, fees and, and other things like that. Um, and in, in addition to that, we don't have to spread around the met full cost Medicaid cost reimbursement, which is also restricted to certain programs, but it can be used for administration in certain cases. So normally that would cushion the blow, but because we had unanticipated drops in revenue this year, uh, particularly in the immunization program, um, children's special health care services, and we also had uh, on a number, uh, two or three occasions, changes in programmatic requirements with certain um, grants. Uh, that had res that restricted us further from having to use fully be able to fully utilize some of these grant funds so the cushion that we normally would have through the med full cost Medicaid cost reimbursement um, it just isn't there because I have to use that on other programs to, to make them sustainable um, in the case of immunizations you might say well they you know, should have known that earlier in the year I mean but the fact of the matter is the bulk, the overwhelming bulk of the revenue that for immunization comes in the third quarter of the year because that's the, that's the time of year where kids go back to school and the heavy use of immunizations is done or vac vaccination is done. So as a result of all this, it's kind of like a four-legged stool and, and sometimes the others will compensate for each other, but because of the restrictions, because of the unanticipated drops in revenue and because of the small margin of error that we had based on the, the this considerably smaller fund balance, use of fund balance this year and other costs, um, we're having to come back to the board to, to ask for more. <coughs> Joe, I, was, I just got a couple more questions. Sure. It seems like the majority of the money is coming from the administration and that could possibly be just a budgetary issue which you were allocated in 2017 as opposed to 2016. Because you don't, you know, it's $138,000 and and some of the other um, departments or services provided are, 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 you know, not that significant except for lab, but it's based on that explanation. In the lab, we've always subsidized that. The general fund's always subsidized, or has subsidized. That, that is correct, correct too. To that yes. extent? Yes. To that amount, you know, the 75000 It's usually been anywhere from sixty-five to <laughs> 75 thousand dollars per year now one one last question sure uh, substantial unbudgeted expenses occurred in retiree health care benefits so uh, give me an explanation on that when my fiscal staff and it's kind of reference of what we had before but when my fiscal staff reviews these things they review it on a continual basis one thing we notice is that uh, the retiree health care cost had exceeded what we originally budgeted or what was originally budgeted, because I don't come up with that number either. But, um, and so those are just increases that happen. We have to pay them. They are retiree health care costs, and they are to my budget. So, um, How does that happen? Yeah, go ahead. So the retiree health care costs, when you're speaking, I looked at, at Joel's budget, and there were two retirees that retired in 2017, and we can't budget in 2016. Who's going to retire in 2017. So all of those costs are something that Joel can't predict and we can't predict because we don't know who's retiring. So those used to be charged to grant funds that were very likely reimbursed by the grants and now they're being charged to administration. So all of those retiree health care is associated with those two employees that are now retired were not budgeted for and wouldn't have been able to be budgeted So for. okay, so that's not the 4% or the 6% that's contributed into the retire into uh, the pension. It's costs associated with somebody retiring, sick time, vacation, things like that. Well, and their health care. So the, the retiree health care is paid directly off the line items, so it doesn't come out of the pension fund. So um, when you have people retire, suddenly you have a $10,000 expense in your retiree health care to pay for that retiree's health care all year long. And you don't, we're not able to predict who's going to retire the following year. So we, when they do the budget, they, they budget for who's currently retired. So any new retirees hit this line item that Joel would not have been able to, to budget for. You could have that in any year. Any department in any year. Yeah, or maybe somebody goes from, 
they were a single plan before, but their spouse loses their health care, and so they changed from single to two percent, which is now an increase in retiree health care that is not something we can predict, nor can we deny it. Well, claims. Yeah. All right. I just kind of looked at it and wanted needed a, 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 an explanation. I got it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well. Uh, Mr. Brigade, uh, the laboratory is the next biggest expense. So, so you, I meant you bill insurance companies, get what you can from insurance, but there are people that pay pay out of pocket for some of this laboratory work that they have done. For the laboratory work yeah, that's laboratory. done, yeah. you know, the the laboratory expenses are broken up um, into a variety of different things. Obviously, personnel costs are the greater cost in that. Um, for some of the laboratory work, specifically like lead testing that we do on, on kids, because we do on-site lead testing. Um, and in some of the other things that we do, we're able to actually build from there. But the other bulk of that too is water testing as well. We test pools every week. Um, in cooperation with Saginaw Valley, we test some of the beach water. Sometimes we actually test beach water on our own when the Saginaw Valley lab isn't operating. But um, a significant amount of revenue actually comes in for, for uh, the pool testing that happens on a weekly basis. And they pay, there's a fee for that. For the there is absolutely <coughs> a fee so for I that. Maybe do we, are we thinking about a fee adjustment for some of the testing? With we, uh, <laughs> Mr. Kwiatkowski, um, has uh, looked at the fee structure this week. He's submitting that too. There will be some increases, um, but we're, we have to also we don't want to overburden Price some of the folks yeah. too. Yeah. If you have fees that are too high, then people will just stop complying with the law. I'm thinking about STD testing, and if you have to pay too much, you're not going to come in and have it done. So, Well, the, the solution to that, too, is something we're doing differently. Um, actually, we're in the planning process and going to implement it fairly soon. Is Traditionally, we've always had STD testing separate from everything else. We do have additional grant funds. Um, and cost-based reimbursement that is restricted to family planning. Now, the good news about that, though, is we can start to redistribute some of the costs to the family planning program via those funds. One of the things that we are definitely going to do is integrate STD testing into family planning. Um, it has always been frowned upon by the state, but now they're actually encouraging it, and we're going to take advantage of that opportunity. Now, the ESPD guidelines that I just got the other day has, has STD testing starting at when they're first sexually active after age 11 or something else. It's, it's part of the Medicaid screening now is that you do STD testing routinely as part of the recommendations that they have. Thank you. No, sure. I, I, did, I don't know, the health fund balance, why does it fluctuate so much from year to year? You know, and I look at when they, you know, you go back, it's a deficit some years. Thing that goes up to 350 and it goes down. So, what, what's the big cause of that? Part of that is, and I got to be careful with it because you don't, you know, it's good to have a balance, but you can't have too much of a balance. I mean, we're not a for profit organization. But the long and the short of it is the health fund balance fluctuates because there are increased revenues due to increased fees that have been collected. Um, sometimes it's uh, decreased cost or a combination thereof. Um, and so, and then sometimes it's increased cost, and that's why they go down. And the same thing too, like this year, it's increased cost and decreased fees. Well, you're talking about the vaccinations, for example. So that was part of the reason. That, that is not. correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, I got it. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, Bob. The only way health fund gets a fund balance is we transfer excess funds from the general fund. <clears throat> And so they had they had some uh, a couple for a couple of years, but they would be in spend it down. They really shouldn't have a, a significant fund balance in that fund. Um, I don't want the board to get the idea that the, the high cost of indirect cost was the reason for this, because we always know this a couple of years ahead of time. So if we hadn't budgeted it up. 151, 151,000, then, uh, then that would be our fault. But um, that was known ahead of time and it fluctuates. Depending on whether they had a project going like another year or so, 
to go up because of all the money they spent on remodeling. But it's always two years behind. And uh, some of the uh, corrections that the health department have recommended will, will help a lot. <coughs> We're not even sure that the 200,000 will be, the whole 200,000 will be needed. Uh, we kind of find that out and maybe in June or May uh, how much we get back from the state because they, well, we get a reimbursement from the state fluctuates whether we get it, you know, within a year or within two years. In one occasion, it was within two years to reimburse it. And uh, <coughs> so we're going to continue, at least I'm going to continue to work with the health department to get this corrected. Commissioner Coon. Bob, you know you brought that up. <coughs> right, uh, Indirect fund of $151,000. That's just a number, 151. It didn't say what it was last year. You know, maybe last year it was, uh, who knows? We should, it wasn't a $151,000 increase, was it? In no. no. So no, that's what I like. I like to see numbers. You, you know, you throw $151,000 there and you say, well, that must be the problem. Well, last year's could have been who knows what. But that's why I say, you know, whether we're getting grants. And whatever the number is this year, it'd be nice to see what the number was last year. And uh, because ultimately we're the folks that when you have, uh, a, you need budget adjustments or there's a financial situation, we're the ones that have to make the decision. But it's nice to have that information beforehand so uh, these don't sneak up on you. I think information is important. And that's not an indication that if we do budget adjustments that somebody's not doing a good job, there's reasons for it. But, you know, um, I kind of like to have as much information as I can. So if somebody asks me out on the street, I can give them a uh, somewhat uh, honest answer. So if you're looking for the indirect cost rate last year? Well, it says 100, that's, you know, Joel, it says $151,000. So if somebody looked at it, oh, there's the problem, 151000 mm -hmm. Last year's could have been 135000 I don't know what it was. We don't know because we don't get shown that information. Well, we get it. There's a study done on indirect cost I understand that, but it's not provided to us in this. Uh, I mean, if you looked at that explanation, which is good, and you answered all my questions. I don't have a problem. It, you could have said indirect was $151,000 this year as opposed to $130,000 last year. Then we said, well, that's $20,000. And I don't know what it is. I'm just saying. Uh, it was not a $151,000 increase. No. Indirect. No. There, there you go. So, I mean, it was a big increase, but not. It could have been 150000 last year. <laughs> it, I, I have the information. That's all I'm asking. I've got the actual numbers here. In 2016, the indirect cost total was 534, or excuse me, 530664 dollars. Or excuse me, that is the current years. In the previous year, it was 379,097 dollars. So it was a based upon those two numbers <coughs> that hundred fifty one thousand was an increase. That was the increase from the previous it year. It wasn't the number. No, that wasn't the number. That's the increase from the previous year. I mean, we would have put that in the budget. Well, we'll have yeah. to look to make sure we did, but that's that that was in the budget. I'm just saying is that there was a very small margin of error this year. Oh yeah. No, I, I just I don't have a problem with any of it. Mm -hmm. I just kinda like um, information and, and maybe that $151,000 is an increase above what was budgeted last year for indirect. No, but I, I wanted to illustrate the point it too that we had it. Not. It is not an unbudgeted increase. And, but I wanted to illustrate the point that we had significant cost increases as well that we had to contend with on I the administrative side. I was only talking about indirect though. I was only talking about the indirect because it said, um, let's see here, in the, in the explanation. And maybe, you know, if that's not the case, it says, or is it here? Uh, administration incurred substantial increases for indirect costs, 151000 So that was in above what was budgeted, the 151000 No, that was part of what was budgeted. But I wanted to illustrate the point, too, that 
we had $151,000 more in costs, plus rest, less use. Oh, that's use. not indirect, though. That is indirect cost. Oh, indirect cost? Is yes. that that number that, um, uh, who does that study? For? Maximus. Maximus, that was, okay. Yep. So it's 151,000 more. That is correct. All right, that's all I yes. need to know. We include that in our transfer. Yeah, so. but that was one of the problems why we had the deficit, was that $151,000 increase in indirect. No. There were, there were other well, uh, considerations. That, that definitely was an increase, but we budgeted for it. Maybe oh. what we didn't do was transfer the increase from general fund to the health fund, and that and that this 200000 would be less. Okay. But also, uh, we don't know the full <coughs> cost reimbursement we're going to get either. Right? That's correct as well. And, and like I said this, before. This more likely will go down. That's why I recommend that it be up to 200000 Commissioner McGee. I found the page that says budgetary solutions with six bullet points. Mm -hmm. so it looks like you have some, some plans. We are in the process of making some changes as well. And it, things are much different than they were 10 years ago. Um, on average, uh, we actually do spend about $168,000 less once you account for the, fund, the use of fund balance and <coughs> transfers in minus the transfers out. Um, so we're running a tight ship and we're going to have to run a tighter ship. Thank you. Another thing we're recommending in the 18 year, 2018 budget is an uh, increase in the amount of hours for the account. Uh, we used to have Vicki Pratt, right? Yeah. In the health department for years. And now we have uh, someone else that they split their time between health department and the big one agency. So we're recommending an increase of 11 hours uh, to try and so they can get a handle on, on uh, finances. Anyone else? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next, do we have uh, any other new business? Seeing none, do we have a closed session? Uh, that's today, Mr. Chair. Okay. Anything under miscellaneous? Oh, yes. I guess it's miscellaneous. OPEB. You've probably been hearing about OPEB a little bit. Bob sent some stuff out about it. Steve Curry you know, has been working. He, he actually, uh, I think they're in a, a meeting this morning with the governor's office and the <coughs> legislature. And it has been voted out of committee. I think uh, maybe Bob brought this up. But Mac has been, has been involved with it. They've been at the table with the governor's office and the legislature trying to get a, the best deal they can. It looks like there's going to end up being an oversight at the end. The big concern the counties have is the the powers that the team would have to come in, you know, like the financial oversight team, like they've had the emergency manager thing. So they've been sort of trying to push back on that. Looks like it might still be included in the, in the bill, but uh, just want to let you know, Matt's been working hard. You know, all, all the uh, local municipalities are concerned about the state coming in and telling them what to do, because we don't tell them what to do, but they come and tell us what to do. But, so, so Matt's been involved. Uh, Steve actually was on the uh, Off the Record show last week and talked quite a bit with the, about OPEB with uh, Tim Scoopik and the group. And he is a county position. So I just want to let you know Matt. Matt was at work keeping an eye on that. Thank you. Okay, any other? Mike. Uh, oh. uh, Vaughn, could, I didn't have a chance to review the latest uh, revisions to the legislation, but I know earlier in the, in the discussion, as the bills were introduced, they affected collective bargaining. You know if that those provisions are still included in the legislation? Yeah. Well, the last I've got, you know, I just passed out a committee this afternoon, so it's still really being worked in. It's a work in progress. So there's like five, five steps to it, and there's I don't know how many bills. There's about five or six different bills, and so they've been trying to get some of the the. Uh, state oversight taken out, you know, the, the emergency manager or financial team that comes in 
doesn't look like they've got it got it out of there yet. So there yeah, aren't that I many. Agree. There aren't that many. Uh, I think I think he said ten counties were on the border and five were pretty bad you know, of all the counties out of Michigan. So it's not that there's a lot of counties. I don't know how many cities and townships there are, but but there are some that are in trouble or could be in trouble. Sure, and, and they need to be addressed. But in my conversation with Steve, I indicated to him that we were in great shape in Bay County, and I think it would be difficult to attract um, you know, great employees like we have in our county workforce if we were to drop our defined benefit pension plan and also our our very uh, uh, you know decent health care benefits for our employees because the salaries aren't that high and a lot of people look at job security they look at uh, you know the health care quality of the health care and also a defined benefit pension which as we know a lot of them are in jeopardy but Bay County has done a great job we're well funded as all of you know uh, your leadership in the past has provided that. You know, I would hate to see, you know, the legislature impose some mandate that would reduce or, or eliminate those benefits yeah. for new hires in Bay County government. I think the one point is that the 20 percent, how much funding we're going to do, and I don't know if that's going to be an option like we've had before. I'm not sure if Bob knows well, if they're, they're going to drop that. Our general uh, group is 117 percent funded. Our sheriff is 127 percent funded in the retirement. But we're way under in the VBA, and one of my recommendations will be to split the contribution from the general fund over into the VBA fund, uh, plus probably a couple other uh, one time transfers. Um, but they probably <coughs> won't have all the details worked out until the 14th at the earliest, I would think. And there's a lot of objection as of this morning. Uh, every site I went on, they didn't think they had the boat yet, so there's going to be some compromises uh, before by the 14th. But in the meantime, we'll have a recommendation um, start to fund uh, the Viva. Commissioner Kuhn. Which is a, uh, the general group uh, Viva funding is only at 17.7%. And the sheriff is about 20.2% funded. So we got some work to do there. Well, most of that VBA for all entities, whether it's at the state or the counties or the cities or the townships, everyone paid for health care uh, as a, as a, on an annual basis uh, until the last 10 years or 15 years. And so that only makes uh, sense that. A lot of places are, are funded the way we are. Our health care or our pension is, is uh, overfunded, so we've done a good job. And, you know, I think it was a Gatsby 35 or whatever that required entities to show their debt over 40 years. They don't show for 40 years a contribution that would be put in there that would significantly reduce those costs. You know, I think what it is is they like to shock people shock people into uh, having uh, employers uh, or have the state come in and say you, you no longer have any health care for your retirees, that's done. Or they're going to pay 50% or something like that. Uh, health care has always been pay as you go and you're never going to come close to funding it in a relatively short period of time. And you know, these, these guys in, uh, in, in Lansing, if they would f push the real issue is to get health care off the backs of the employee or employers by, you know, uh, lobbying in Washington where it can be done, that would solve so many of these problems. But ultimately, what they're going to do, a lot of people are going to get hurt in this, and you're going to have a lot of people who are either going to lose health care or going to pay a significant amount of money more with health care. That disposable income they lose going to health care does nothing for the Main Street economy. It, it surely helps Wall Street tremendously. Everybody from the chamber to um, the hospitals, because if I have health, you know, if I've got to pay uh, a significant amount of the cost, I'm not going. 
and a lot of people aren't going to go. And what what's going to happen is you're going to see a reduction in the amount of services provided at the local hospital. So there should be a lot of these folks, you know, that should have done something before. Right now, what's going to happen in the next week or two is they're going to jam things down people's throat, and a lot of people are going to get hurt on this. Where you don't have to, people did not necessarily have to get hurt if they would have uh, taken uh, an interest that benefited people and not corporations. So, you know, you're gonna, people are gonna get hurt and then you're gonna <coughs> go from there, whatever, wherever that ends up, and it's unfortunate. Mr. Chairman, one last comment. At federal level, a uh, <coughs> great deal of concerns, <coughs> uh, concern among the counties across the country, uh, especially in New York, California, where property values are higher, but I believe under both the Senate and House versions, still has to go to conference and be worked out. Very controversial provisions on eliminating the deduction for state and local property taxes, getting credit on your federal income tax on those deductions. So with those, I anticipate in the future, we, I think, um, here in Bay County, but across Michigan and the country, it will be a much more difficult task getting millage uh, requests approved by property tax owners when they find out they no longer get a credit for some of those property taxes and income taxes they pay at the state and local level. So, yeah, a lot of things, both on land, state level and federal level, that can impact the future funding streams for counties and municipalities. <coughs> well, chair under announcements, I have one. Uh, we got the Tri County dinner tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in Midland. Thursday. Or, or, oh, yeah, Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> December 7th. All right. Two days. Two days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Commissioner. Uh, I have an announcement on Thursday, February the 22nd, long ways out, 2018, at 7 p.m. at the Pink County Township Hall. We're going to have uh, I'm going to ask department heads from the county, ask the county. I've had uh, people come to me, well, we need to have something in the evening where we can have somebody from the health department, maybe somebody division on aging, so I'm going to get together with uh, different department heads and ask that they come up there and get grilled by some of the northern constituents. But I think Joel was up there last week and they just, they just were amazed at the information. So uh, thanks again, Joel, for going up there and doing that. But, so that kind of gave, uh, gave us the idea. It's going to be sponsored by myself and Ken Conning and Stanley's Rotary Club. So, you know, if you're a department head, you will get an email shortly. That's all I have. Anyone else? Motion adjourns. Always in order. Support. Motion and support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.